Hello, I'm Ron Fox for Get Woodworking and we're going to carry on talking about routers and some of the things you can do with them. Right now we're ready to make our precise clean cut on our rough cut slot. I've done exactly what I did with the previous job. I've taken the straight edges and with double sided tape I have stuck them exactly to the pencil lines and I filled in the end with a little piece so that I can go across the top. I've got the same bearing guided cutter in. I simply clamp on the other two straight edges just to give the job a bit of a lift so the length of the cutter can go through it. Here we are. Set the depth of cut again. Now I come along here and I run against the straight edge with the bearing across the top and back again cutting clockwise to preserve the correct direction of cut which is against the rotation of the cutter. Switch on, gently and we repeat that because we don't have to get it in one pass. Right, well now, with the straight edges removed after doing the trimming cut, what we have here is a piece of MDF with a very accurate slot cut in it at right angles to the base. We made that slot 20 millimeters wide and we made it so that a 20 millimeter guide whoosh would fit snugly into it. Now in order to get this ready for use, one more job we have to do is to glue a piece of batten across the bottom so that we can position this on our workpiece and clamp it to use it. What we're going to do, take a pencil, put the batten flush with the edge, draw a line across that is not meant to be an accurate right angled line, it is merely to denote where the glue should go or if you look at it from the other way around where the glue shouldn't go. I'm going to do an old fashioned rubbed joint. Now you sometimes are told that this is a joint that is best done or even only done with hot animal glue. Well I've made a few hundred of these if not thousands and I've never used hot animal glue for them. By the time that glue is likely to fail you would have cut lumps out of this and moved on to the next or the next but one jig that you've made to take its place so we, I don't think we have to worry too much about the glue. What I've got here is some quick setting super fast PVA. You can use a shower gel container on it these days, some of the various food containers, and they make superb glue dispensers. Now here is a shower container, shower gel container even. It's got a little built-in spigot at the top. You can take the lid off to fill it up. It stands upside down when you're using it, and you can see the level in it. It overcomes all the old problems of turning these over and shaking them and my grandson recently cottoned on to a better idea there are all sorts of food containers or food product containers where they make absolutely perfect glue dispensers here we've got a screw top a wide neck that we can easily fill nice easy hole for pouring again a built-in spigot it's never likely to clog up. I'm resorting to the old 
spraddle in the top because I didn't put a nail in it this time. Having got that out of the way, go back to the glue that we are going to use. And now we've got a bit on here. You can take a bit of something to spread it. Of course, a lot of the time people refer to the forefinger as the universal glue spreader. It's perfectly true it is. I don't use it if I can help it because I have a nasty habit of putting my sticky finger on something where I don't want glue to get. So we spread a thinnish film and we're going to do the old fashioned rub joint where we simply put it on there and we rub it firmly. And what we're aiming to do is to spread that glue in a very thin, even film. And I'm told by the experts that the ideal that we're aiming at is to have two mirror finishes on each surface and an extremely thin, even film of glue between. Now, it doesn't take much rubbing before you begin to feel it biting. The other thing you do, of course, is to square it. And then wait for it to dry. Okay. 